Hello everyone, I'm Anthony Gizmondi for GizmondiOnline.com. Today we complete our BC 2020 Harvest Series with a visit to Tantalus Vineyards in Southeast Kelowna. We're meeting with winemaker David Patterson, who's crushing his historic Old Vine Riesling. Well, thanks for joining us, David. I know it's a, it's a super busy time. Uh, is it a rush to the finish now to get these grapes in? Yeah, it kind of feels like it at the moment. We're just picking in between uh, rain events. Um, Luckily, you know, the grapes are basically just sitting pretty right now. The vines have completely shut down. So we're not going to, you know, the rain's not really going to affect what's happening with the vine. Right. So, um, yeah, we're pretty, uh, pretty excited about the quality at the moment. We're just trying to not have our pickers pick in torrential downpours. <laughs> We've been talking to a lot of people all across British Columbia. You're in southeast Kelowna. Uh, what can you tell us about how the vintage ran for you this year? Well, it's, I mean, I'm not sure what other people have been saying, but uh, very, very small crops this, this year. I mean, we had a, a record rainfall in uh, June, which uh, caused a lot of the bunches to be very small and a lot of the berries to abort. They didn't, uh, they didn't pollinate. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is a lot of a tiny aborted berries um, and very small clusters. But the concentration and the, the character that's in the juice because of these small crops is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I think... I saw Daryl Brooker recently say, uh, you know, vintage of the decade, and, and I agree with him for sure, as far as quality. There's just not much of it. So today we're, we're talking about Riesling, uh, maybe just for our viewers. Is it easier or harder to grow Riesling in a, uh, in a longer season, or how are, are the skins thick or small, or how, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, Riesling is known for degrading a little bit sometimes and you know getting botrytis and other other diseases but uh, it's been a very interesting season where we had all that rain in June so you know flowering wasn't great but uh, after that you know we had a very long nice dry warm spell um, to really uh, bring the season along and then we've had a very cold cold September and into October um, which has allowed us to have a lot of hang time and a lot of flavor development without a lot of pot potential alcohol. So yeah. e even more so than last year, we had similar conditions last year, but maybe not quite as much rain. And uh, yeah, very excited about the, the, the concentration. So you, you picked some grapes. I hope you can maybe take us over and show us those grapes now and tell us yeah. a little bit about, tell us a little bit about these grapes. They're a very uh, special uh, uh, vineyard in British Columbia. So this, this is uh, our Old Vines Riesling. Um, my crew is just loading the press right now. Um, so just dumping these whole bunches straight into the press to be whole bunch pressed. And uh, basically these come from our 1978 plantings. And they are very special for us because they make our uh, iconic wine, the, the Old Vines Riesling. How simple or complicated is it to make a Riesling wine with those, those old, uh, old wine grapes? Um, I, I mean, every winemaker tries to, I suppose, say that, you know, that they have their touch with the grapes, and, and, and I obviously do, but uh, really they do make themselves in a lot, of, a lot of ways. The biggest decision I make is when to pick them and when the flavor is right. Um, and after that, it's very simple fermentation and very simple techniques to bring this wine uh, to light. We really want to just show the, show the quality of, um, of, of each vintage and the nuances of each vintage. So it's never going to be exactly the same and, and we really like that and embrace that. I don't want to get too technical, but you're, you're, th this wine is very famous for uh, a fair amount of uh, residual sugar, but a lot of acidity too, so that when you tasted it, you don't notice either of them. Is, are you seeing those kind of numbers this year? Yeah, so my, my theory behind that, because this is a very dry style of wine that we make with the old vines, you know, always under nine grams. So basically, basically I'm basing that um, uh, style um, after a Grosskowitzian style, um, yep. so that German, um, you know, best grapes of the harvest, German dry Riesling style. Um, and I think what happens with these old vines is that we have such high dry extract within the uh, uh, the grapes themselves that it balances the acidity 
and we don't need as much sugar to balance that acidity because of that um, textural weight that we get. Mm. I love that you're busy there, David. Uh, when, when did you start the harvest? How long have you been going and how much longer will it take? So we've been going since sparkling wine, uh, mid, middle of um, uh, September, basically. We picked the first lot and then it really stopped for a while. Then we started sort of getting it in drips and drabs and getting rosé. So basically, um, we started mid-September with bubbles. Then we, uh, then we picked a little bit of rosé. And then uh, it's been one of those stop-start harvests. So now we're 18th of October and we've still got Riesling and uh, Pinot Noir um, still out there, but in really good shape. And we'll bring it in as soon as uh, we get another window, which is looking like about Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I think I have about four more days of picking to go and then we're, we've got everything in. Uh, we heard a bit about some sleet and snow in your region. Have you, have you experienced that already this year? Oh yeah. Yeah. There was sleet, sleet this morning. So yeah. we, we, call, we called the pick off this morning um, and we're hoping in the next couple of days uh, we can get that last bit in. And then uh, before we know it, we're going to have the snow on the ground and it'll be pruning season again. Yeah, well, it's always a cycle. Uh, it's been a it's been a strange year with COVID and all. Uh, but uh, what what we hear from people is they're expecting to have pretty nice wine. I think it's a it could be a good ending to a pretty difficult year. Yeah, we're hoping for that too. I mean, uh, I, as I was saying earlier, I think it's one of the the highest quality vintages I've ever seen. Um, and there won't be a lot of it. And and uh, you know, when we look at up and down the Pacific Northwest, we've got horrendous wildfires in Napa to the point of producers just not picking picking fruit and then uh, you know effects of those fires all the way up through Oregon and Washington and uh, suddenly you get to the Similkameen and the Okanagan and we we managed to dodge that particular bullet this year and yeah um, they're going to make some some very special wines this year I think well, before I let you go, maybe just a very quick update on the sub app. Is it going to happen up there? Are you going to divide the north a little bit more for us? Yeah, we are walking, working on that. So um, we're, we're going to have an East Kelowna Slopes, which uh, basically starts where I am and, uh, and heads north out to where uh, Kitch and Camelot are. Um, yeah. And then there'll be a South Kelowna Slopes, which will be uh, the slopes really close to the lake. Um, so, you know, where St. Herberta, Summer Hill, and Cedar Creek and Martins Lane are. Um, so we're, we're doing this together, um, myself and, uh, and Taylor from uh, Cedar Creek, uh, amongst others. Um, but we, we actually think it makes more sense to divide these two um, pieces of land rather than having the biggest sub-appellation in the Okanagan, uh, which, which it would be if we put both of them together. We figure yeah. that... Uh, it's our generation's job to carve the land up and it'll be the next generation's job to put the laws of that land in place over time. I like that. David, uh, thanks so much for your time today and uh, giving us a glimpse at the Old Vine Vineyard Riesling, uh, a very special wine. It's great to catch it just as it's come off the vine. Uh, I hope things turn out for the rest of the week and uh, maybe you'll get a short holiday before the end of the year. Sound, sounds good to me, for sure. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you uh, to your crew as well for letting us have a look inside. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. Cheers. Well, that wraps up our BC Harvest Series. Thank you all for watching. If you've missed any of the eight episodes, visit our website, gizmoniaonwine.com. For more videos and wine reviews, follow us on social and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For now, I'm Anthony Gizmondi, and I'll see you next time.